So what I'm asking the public is, what are their opinions on the youth in today's society? Uh, yeah. Certainly, uh, certain aspects of the youth uh, as respect and responsibility. Sometimes yeah, they seem to be uh, not quite there all the time. They've got no manners and they don't want to work. Not being honest. Community service? Yeah. Oh, definitely high school, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I think that's what lacks now is that whole inter integration with the community. I mean, they're all into themselves too much, right? As much as respect for the older older person anymore. Behaviour is lacking. Increasingly, um, society's got an expectation of our youth to, you know, to be contributing, to be doing the right thing. But um, there's very few opportunities for our youngsters to actually experience those sort of things or, or be given an opportunity to show the leadership or the, the, the problem solving or the group work or the, um, the positive contributions that they can make. We were approached by the government in 1998, um, Cadets WA have been going in Western Australia for a little while and they were fairly active going around to schools to find out if they would start a cadet unit. I've been with Red Cross since 1990 as an instructor, having done my first, first aid course in 1975 with Red Cross. Um, so then they said Red Cross were interested in starting a unit, but they need somebody who's an adventure leader. Well, that's me. Strength in the unit is the way in which it's led, and uh, you know we've got Ron Whitnell out there. He's been been the leader uh, of the Red Cross Cadets and a great participant in the in the college and the school. And um, you know he, he's the one who provides the inspiration for a lot of these young people. And that's the sort of thing that we see around Red Cross and indeed the community service sector. That um, the the real strength of the of the humanitarian effort comes down to those precious few people who can actually lead and inspire and motivate and do all that little bit of organising that's needed. I was a bit apprehensive when someone mentioned about um, this help. Ren um, my next door neighbour, Mrs Renata Milne, she turned around and said to me that you could really do with some help and we have a, help, a team, a t two teams or three teams of um, people at the school. And well, I was a bit apprehensive about it. At my age, we're pretty negative thinking. We, we, in fact, don't want people to help us out. We want to try and do it ourselves. So I contacted the uh, Red uh, Cross Cadets up at uh, Southern Christian College uh, up in Bedfordale. And um, they came within a week, cleared the uh, vegetation and, and offered to, to assist uh, clearing the vegetation on a regular, regular occurrence. I think you've seen the one where we were doing the shed. Um, that shed roof is on tonight um, and then the materials will be brought out of the uh, storage unit that the lady's got them in and placed in the shed for her. Uh, we're doing two other properties this afternoon. So um, I'm a first aid instructor so we train the children up to be able to use that first aid and instead of just training in first aid and then waiting for something to happen we actually go out and practice it. The Minnawarra Park Festival is one but we do a whole range of other events through the year for other schools, for different fates, um, all, all sorts of activities. The being in cadets and having that first aid background helped me get into uni, into the course and doing what I'm doing, so yeah. Cadets has definitely made me choose nursing and paramedicine because it's just what I want to do. Um, it's good to see young people in the community giving back to the community and I think absolutely more of it needs to happen, absolutely. Well, this program for the city of Armadale is unbelievable. It is something that we really need every year. The support we have from those people, on the, uh, the Red Cross people and also the cadet, we can't do without them. I mean, and I think I need to be in my position very optimistic about the next generation and young people and volunteerism because if I'm not optimistic about it, I tell you, we will miss, we will miss a whole generation. I could see that. Uh, challenging young people so that they can, uh, everybody has a limit on what they'll do. They'll, they say, oh, I can do this, but I'm not going to do anything else. Um, to extend that limit, um, a program like that will set them a physical challenge that they can try and overcome.
um, the giant swing, I, I'm petrified of at heights. And the first time I just figured out, I just said no. And I just, I, I literally said, no, I'm not going to do that. No, not all the way. God! I'm, I'm still a little bit afraid of heights, but not as much. Just seeing the kids uh, uh, go further than they thought they could. So, yeah, that's always, that's always what we like to see. I found um, in the many years I've been working with youth, young people I find um, are often frightened of their futures. They don't like the way the world's going. They're sometimes a bit concerned about the community and they want to play a role in it or they haven't got the opportunity to, to do anything about it. One of the situations we have in society today is that we seem to have a lot of issues around uh, youth in general um, having spare time on their hands. You'll hear quite often as a kid will say to either adult or parents that uh, I'm bored and it's something that um, my generation would never ever say to my parents because I never said the word I was bored, I'd be busy doing something. I didn't want to be doing what they wanted me to do so you'd be out the door. Before cadets um, started I was just like bored out of my, like, I was just bored staying at home. I was doing Cadets First and as soon as I turned 15 I also joined a couple of community groups, a state emergency service and a volunteer fire brigade as well. I did it for such a long time that I think it did help shape me to be the person I am today. Um, I'd love, like I said, I'd love to get back into volunteering as well. I've had to take a step back with family and work life unfortunately. With the first aid training, you've seen the first aid training that we do here with the cadets. Um, and just this year alone, um, apart from the first day that we apply for the City of Armidale and through the cadet program, cadets have had the opportunity to use those skills outside of the school. Um, on Saturday I was at work and a girl had a fit with her muscles and her muscles around her lungs started spasming so she stopped breathing. She was three years old and I had to do um, CPR on her. It was really scary and just like just all the thoughts coming into your head and it's really stressful at the time, but then afterwards it was really good. But at the time it was just really stressful. <laughs> Do you think you would have um, been able to handle the situation the same way, whereas if you hadn't been a part of the Red Cross Cadets? No way. That's how I got my first aid, so, yeah. Well, isn't it fantastic when somebody's learned a skill and then get to apply it in real life and, and then they can feel that they've had um, a great effect on someone else's life, and either saving it or um, just keeping them going till um, help them come along, so fantastic. I actually don't like to talk about uh, volunteers, I actually like to talk about um, you know, community spirit and, and being a humanitarian and what does that mean. Um, and, and often I go around, uh, around talking to community groups about these subjects. Um, it's, about, it's about the rewards of not thinking about yourself, not being self-absorbed, not thinking about where you know my next meal's coming from, but thinking about somebody else. Well, hopefully we we're um, giving them a, an attitude of serving others. So, and that's that's why I really like Red Cross Cadets, uh, and having that at a Christian school where the we you know we're teaching them a bit of uh, discipleship and a bit of servanthood. So yeah, so so um, yeah, going out there and helping others in the community when they leave school. Like even like my husband and the things that I've done since school as well, um, he just knows that it's all come from yeah. being in the cadet program for so long. So teaching, teaching that it's not just themselves, uh, that, you know, not self-centred, but to be looking out and seeing what other people, uh, you know, what they need and, and uh, their struggles and, and being willing to help those that are in need. Yeah, so. And once, once you actually get into that um, f frame of mind where you actually devote some of your time not thinking about yourself but doing something for somebody else who is 
um, who needs a hand, uh, not, not uh, um, vulnerable necessary or disadvantaged or, or any of that, but it's just another human being that might need an assistant even for an hour. Um, once you start getting into that pattern, you re realize the rewards are enormous and you start getting, um, uh, you know, it's probably not the same as endorphins after a, you know, a, a 10 kilometer run or something like that. But it is, it is a really warm, fuzzy feeling and that's something that a lot of people talk to me about after they've volunteered. Uh, you know, they really feel good about themselves. The cadets will, will often say to me, especially a, a 12 year old, before we go out for the first time uh, and they're being introduced to the program, they might say things like, why should I go and help somebody else for nothing? The moment they go out with their team, with their squads, and they're working someone's yard, and they see that person come back with some appreciation on their face, um, a, just a look of joy, um, you know, a thank you. Those children want to go again and again and again. And so they're looking forward to meeting new people and having new jobs to do. I would like to say what a wonderful job you've done. Thank you very much, guys, and, and um, thank you for coming up to a not an old guy like me and giving me a hand. I really appreciate it. You've done a wonderful job. No Everything you've done, I won't have to rick my back and do it myself. But it's yeah. wonderful. No problem. Thank you very much indeed. No worries, thank you, Ron, for, right, for no looking after. Right, guys, on the bus, let's go. Cheers, mate. Catch you later. Hey, you might come down again sometime. It's you won't, yeah. you won't, I won't be knocking you back if the offer comes, mate. Yeah, well, no, you're right. I won't yeah. be, um, I'm not, neg I'm not so negative-minded as I used to be. I yeah, no, no, you're right. <laughs> no, if there's work, if there's work, if there's work.